I'm going to talk to these people cold because yeah. what's the worst they can do to me? All they can do is yell at me. That's it. Yeah. They don't know where I live. Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, America's number one podcast for new real estate investors, where we know that finding discounted property is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your lucky host, Brent Daniels, Mr. TTP, and I am telling you, if I can do it, so can you. So let's get started with this. If I could make success easy for you, if I, I would be cheating you out of its biggest dividend, and that is the sense of awareness and aliveness and empowerment and ultimately self-confidence that can only come from confronting your problems head on, rising despite your fears to their collective challenges and ultimately prevailing. All right, that is a quote from a book, Self Made in America, fantastic book, very, very under the radar, but it, 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 it just, it is a perfect introduction to this wonderful interview that I'm having with uh, with an incredible wholesaler out of Kentucky, out of Wilmore, Kentucky. I'd like to introduce to the Wholesaling Inc. podcast, Natasha Turner. Natasha, say hello to everybody. Hey guys, what's up TTP family? That's it. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited because you have a roller coaster of an experience to talk about here. And, uh, and, and, and the excitement and the thrill and then also the almost being in a boxing match with a seller going back and forth and just taking your lumps. And, uh, and essentially at the end of it, you were able to complete a really fantastic 21 unit uh, transaction that went from a complete grand slam home run to something that was an incredible learning experience <laughs> and something that was still very profitable for you. But we're going to break that down. But first of all, uh, Natasha, how did you find wholesaling and why do you want to be a real estate investor? Yeah, um, I happened upon wholesaling accidentally, I guess. Um, a really good friend of ours had invi invited us to a Tony Robbins event and someone at that event was talking about wholesaling and I was like, that sounds really intriguing. My husband should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that wasn't really in the cards for him. So I was looking for something interesting to listen to one day while I was working out and uh, came across the Wholesaling Inc. podcast and it was super energetic and it really caught my ear. So I kept listening to it every day. And after a couple of weeks, I was like, there's really something to this. Like these are real people with real stories. It's not yeah. hype. Um, and so then I got hooked and I talked to my husband about it and he's like, well, if you want to give it a try and you're willing to do the work, go for it. And I was like, are you serious? I was kind of hoping you'd say no, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Yeah. He gave me full reign to go for it. So I did. That is awesome. And just to let everybody know, I don't know um, if, if many people mention this on the podcast, but every time that we're talking with somebody that is giving uh, or, or telling a story about a deal that they close, everything is completely above board. Everything is vetted out. Everything's looked at. We look at settlement statements. We've got a TCPA attorney that's all over us all the time. This is real life. And I think that that's just something that you touched on. These are real people, real life. This isn't made up. This isn't fantasy. This isn't some sales pitch. This is incredible people around the country that make a decision. And that decision is I am going to wholesale real estate. I'm going to do what it takes. And that's why this, this podcast is such a blessing. It's, it's so incredible to be a part of because of people like you, Natasha, that were listening to the podcast, took action, and now get to share your story on the actual podcast. Yeah. I mean, it's like a full circle. It's beautiful. And I, I just, um, I, 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 I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you being on here more importantly and sharing your story. So what did you do before you went to Tony Robbins um, that, that kind of led you down this path to, to not only get into real estate, but be an entrepreneur, be a business owner. You know what I mean? Did you have that? Yeah. Did you grow up with that or were you working for a while? And then all of a sudden you got out of it. T tell me about pre Tony Robbins. Okay. Um, well, I didn't grow up in it at all. My dad wasn't in real estate or anything like that. Um, 
but he taught me two things. Um, I had asked him one time, dad, if, if there was anything you could tell me, what's the most important thing I should know? What do I need to change to become a better person? And he told me two things, work hard and walk in love. And so I really took that to heart and I kind of built my young adulthood on those two things. Um, but I was really into missions work and traveled overseas in lots of different countries. And that was my way of showing love was, you know, just to help people as I came across them, whoever needed help, I was willing to go on any adventure and do whatever they needed. Um, and I really, really enjoyed that, but it didn't make money. And um, <laughs> there's some funny quote that my husband says all the time from a movie. I don't even know what movie it is, but he's, <laughs> they're like, well, they told us we could live on love. And the wife is like, but we need money too. Yeah. That's basically my life story. Sure, sure. Yeah. So the latest adventure I was on um, was I was in Nigeria working as the principal of a school. And I got deathly ill, literally, mm. um, was laying on a deathbed and wasn't even strong enough to travel home. So they had to to do some things to kind of build up my strength enough that I could even get on an airplane to go back. And they're like, you really do need to go back to the US if, if you want to survive. Um, so my husband made the call that that was enough of the <laughs> adventure and we were going to go back and take care of that. So we came back and I was sitting on the couch one day talking to a friend and I just realized in that moment um, that I had a choice right then. I could either wallow in all the things that had fallen through in my life, or I could choose not to be a victim and say, I'm going to take the bull by the horns and I'm going to do something with this extension of life that I've gotten. And I was like, well, I have no idea what that could be. Um, right before Nigeria, I had started investigating entrepreneurism. My son was really interested in it. He had me reading a bunch of books about how to be an entrepreneur. And I was like, man, these people are awesome. You know, just the the drive, I could really identify with the drive and the vision that they had. Um, and so it was around that time that I ended up going to that conference. And then it just all came together in a very weird way. And I never thought I'd be into real estate, but I was like, I guess I'm going to try this. And it was only because of you talking on the podcast about um, how you really could do it with not much money. Because by that time, our funds were exhausted. Sure. Um, and then I remember one particular story on the podcast was a couple sharing their story about how at night after work, they would hand write out letters to sellers, like one by one, stamps one by one. And I was like, okay, if you can literally do it with that little money, I can do this. Yeah. I'm going to conquer my fear. I'm going to do what Brent says, and I'm going to talk to these people cold because yeah. what's the worst they can do to me? All they can do is yell at me. That's it. Yeah. I don't know where I live. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. Well, and early on, I remember you joining the TTP family and you, we, we were texting back and forth and calls and texts and texts and going through whether it be deals or whether it be something that was going on, whether it be you were close on something and then it wouldn't come through. And this was a yeah. while. I mean, it wasn't like it, it wasn't like you got out of the gates and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden you were like uh, making money, you know, day 30 or something like this. You really yeah. had, and that's why I had that quote for you. I read yeah. this this morning and I was like, this <laughs> so is perfect true. for Natasha because you really had to go through that, that really yeah. hard part, that really that 90 days, 120 days yep. of really hard. Can I do this? You have to keep your faith really, really, really strong. And that's, it, it's a huge lesson to anybody out there that thinks that you get on the phone one time, you call a list of sellers, and then all of a sudden it starts raining down, you know, hundred dollar yeah. bills. It's just, it doesn't work that way. You have to build it up. You have to build up your endurance. You have to build up your skills. You have to build up your lead pipeline and then things start rolling. And then all of a sudden you're there yeah. negotiating a 21 unit deal as one of your first yeah. deals. And it's like, Oh my God, what are you doing, Natasha? What are you getting yourself yeah. into? And you're like, yeah. I, I, I want to help this woman out. I really yep. want to, you know, be there and, 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 and work with her. She needs some help. So why yeah. don't we dive into that story a little bit? Let's talk about um, your, your, your deal. Yeah. Um, so I, it actually came from two separate lists. It was driving for dollars. I had marked it down. And then it was also a vacancy list, I think. Um, and it was actually her ex-husband who I was trying to call. Yep. And I remember specifically um, 
just like five minutes before that, I was like, oh my word, I'm so tired of these calls. I just want to end it. Like, uh, I'm done with this. And I, your voice was in my head and it, it said, no, you need to finish the time. Just finish it because you never know when that last call is going to be the call. And so I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Like psyching myself up and I kept calling. And sure enough, she picked up and she's like, well, that's my ex-husband. I haven't talked to him in however long it was. She's like, but why don't you just buy my place? Because I never wanted to be a lady anyway. Um, I'd sell mine. And my brain was like, wait, what? <laughs> and, then she, and then she's like, yeah, I own 21 on the same street. And my brain was like, oh, my word. It's getting ready to rain. I can't believe this. And so I finished the conversation with her. Um, and then I, I had to stop the dialer out of, after that. And I ran out of the room and I was like, guys, you'll never guess what. <laughs> yeah. And in that moment, I thought it was going to be all amazing and rainbows and so super smooth and easy. It was kind of glad, uh, you know, it was a good thing I got to think that in the moment because that's yeah. probably what only gave me the energy to get through what came after that. Well, some interesting things just to kind of uh, uh, piece this together. Uh, a couple of things. When you get addresses, when you're driving around, you're, you're, you're looking for a distressed property. And this is for everybody listening and or watching. If you want to uh, put a face with a voice, uh, definitely check out Brent Daniels' YouTube channel. Um, and you can see Natasha and myself. But um, truly, when you're driving around, you get an address of a, of a property that looks run down. When you pull the information, when you skip trace that information, uh, oftentimes it comes with family members or spouses that are attached to that property. Now they might've been divorced. She might not have even owned that ugly property that Natasha was originally calling on, but guess what? She owns other properties. She owns yeah. people own. I mean, you never know what people own. So you got to ask the question. You got to see what's going on. I don't even think you had to ask the question. I think she just was like, get yeah. me out of this situation. Yeah. But typically if somebody says, no, that's not my house or no, I don't want to sell that property right now. I love it. The next question is, do you have any other properties that you would consider selling? Maybe something that needs some love, something that yeah. needs some work. Right. So uh, some some little tips there for you when you are making your calls. If you do talk to a spouse or a family member, make sure that you ask them if they have any other property and don't make it just a broad statement. Well, do you want to sell anything? No, be specific. <laughs> yeah. That's why I say, do you want to sell something? Maybe something that needs some love, needs a full remodel. That's really what we're looking for because yeah. it pinpoints in their brain. Oh, wait, I remembered that I inherited a yeah. property uh, from my aunt a month ago and I haven't been to it, but I, I need to sell, you know, these yep. things happen. You would think that it's crazy, but it truly does happen. So, yeah. okay. So you make this initial contact with her. She says she has 21. Are they houses? Are they townhomes? What are they? Townhomes. Mm -hmm. So they're just all connected. Yeah. Yeah. And is this, is this your first deal? Uh, by that time, it might've been my well, it was my third deal, I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure I closed the other two right. quite a ways before that, but they came at about the same time. But the, on the first two, how much did you make? <laughs> oh, you make me share all the awful things. Okay, the first one, because I was partnering with someone who's a very shrewd businessman, I only made $500. Okay, and the second one? The second one, we were still partnering, and I got to make 5000 on that one. So that was okay. fun. Okay. So yeah. your first two deals, you did 5,500. Now you are standing in front of a 21 unit townhouse complex yep. and you're yep. like, yeah, I got it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll handle this, right? Yeah, pretty much. Cause I was listening to you every day. So yeah. I felt like I could conquer the world. Yeah. So you went out, you got it. Was there any issues with the pricing? You, did she talk about, I mean, you yep. pre-qualified her. I remember yep. talking to you as soon as you had had that call and really pulled it out of her. So what were the condition of these units? Um, she, she described them as being budget units. She fixed everything anytime it went wrong, but she didn't do anything fancy to them whatsoever. She, she didn't, didn't update them, didn't upgrade them. Not until someone moved out and she wouldn't put in new ACs until one broke. She wouldn't replace the roof until something was wrong with it, you know, but she kept them up basic. Yeah. Um, I do remember when it came time to value something in my gut was just telling me I needed to double check with you because 
they were all rented out and they were hardly ever vacant. And I knew the wholesale normal pricing just didn't make sense there. Right. Um, so I remember texting you about that and you advised me to do somewhere between 80 and 90% mm -hmm. depending on our area. Yep. So I went with that, did the math and I was like, Ooh, if she agrees to this price, I could make 200,000 bucks on this deal. It's like so exciting. Cause I knew yep. it was only going to be a hundred for me and a hundred for my partner, but it was still super exciting. That's, yeah, those so are that's big, where we started. Best of deals. Yeah. Yep. She accepted. She accepted the offer and I was flipping out like, this is so great. Now, did she, did she give you any indication on what she wanted for it? Um, so when I asked her price, all she would say was, I don't have a firm price in mind. I just know that the appraisal value on the PVA, I think it was 67,000 each. Okay. So I had to multiply that by 21. I got a number. Um, and I was like, you know, that's pretty, it's pretty close. So PBA I brought it. is the tax assessor pulling it or the city or yep. the county pulling value to be able to tax the, the property? Yep. That's PBA? Yep. Okay. And then I looked at some townhomes that had sold close by recently and they were up a little from that. So I knew that gave me some good margin there. Mm -hmm. And so I went ahead and made the offer and she's like, that's not out of the question. That's in my price range. But then she didn't want to do any business over the holidays. It was right around Thanksgiving. I know. And I know. That's such a big thing around here. Nobody, the older people don't want to do business during the winter. They don't sure. want to do any business around Christmas or Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So that whole time I had to just keep every once in a while checking on her, wishing her a happy Christmas and all that good stuff, making yep. sure I didn't drop out of her mind. Um, and I can't remember, it might have been February before we actually had a signed contract. And that's when you were like, time kills all deals, Natasha. This one might be dead. Yep. <laughs> Don't let it be dead. Just keep in front of her. Just keep yeah. in front of her. Just keep in front of her. Don't yeah. let her. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And, you know, just, just something real quick to for everybody out there. If you're looking at the tax assessor value or the property uh, valuation from the assessor, um, typically they're going to be, uh, much lower than what the actual value of the house is going to be. So if anybody, when you say, if you hear an owner say, well, the, the tax assessor has it valued or appraised at this price, ding, ding, ding. I mean, that yeah. you, you ding, should ding, just ding. be, there should be lightning bolts coming out of your yeah. eyes. You were just like, oh my gosh, it is so exciting because you know that they're going to be reasonable with the price. So what was the price yeah. that um, that you guys had agreed on? 1.2 million. 1.2 million. Okay. Uh -huh. For 21 units, guys, if you're listening to this and you're just like, oh my gosh, 1.2 million for 21 units. This is incredible. So yeah. what do you do? How do you find a buyer for something like this? This isn't a mom and pop fix and flipper. Okay. Yeah. This isn't somebody that d dabbles in this business. This is a serious buyer that's going to have yeah. serious you know, really, really scrutinize the deal, work the numbers, understand the language, understand what's going on here, understand and interested in what you're going to make on the deal, right? Yep. So how do you find a buyer? How'd you do it? Well, my first thought um, when I came across this property was my business partner um, had some really interesting connections. And one of them was a hedge fund manager. And he had been looking for apartments or something like that in Kentucky because he likes the area and he can get a lot more value for his dollar here than he can in Colorado where he's from. Sure. So I was like, man, this would be perfect for him. He's very upstanding character. He'd really take care of these people. And that was really important to the seller because she had owned him for 24 years, built him from the ground up with her husband. You know, these people were her family. Yeah. So that was really important to her. So I um, started out, you know, hooking up my business partner and asking him to contact them. And that was just dragging on and on and I was sweating it. So I went into the Facebook groups um, and started looking for different people that gave indications that they looked for bigger stuff, um, for bigger projects. And I just started messaging them. A lot of them I didn't even have phone numbers for, but I yep. could check their activity in the group and kind of see what they liked. Yep. And so I reached out to them and I think I got three people that were rising to the top, like, yes, I'm interested. I have the funds. I can give you proof. And they were all interested at 1.4 million. 
which is one what we point, were asking. You locked it up for 1.2. They they are liking the numbers at 1.4. Yeah. And then I got a, so since they knew they were kind of, there were several people interested at the same time, one came back with, I'll give you 1.41. And I was like, done. <laughs> yeah. So how long was the period from contract date to when it was supposed to close? Okay. You remember so how long the escrow period was? I think I did, because I didn't know any better. I think I did like 30 days. <laughs> with it. Yeah. I know you did. Woo. I know you did because I remember you telling me this. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. I said, you get on the phone and you call everybody. Like, yeah. I want you to be exhausted at the end of the day <laughs> because you are calling so many cash buyers and trying to yeah. figure this thing out. So, um, how'd it go? So, obviously, it closed easy peasy and you made 200000 no, Absolutely not. Okay. Nope. So, what happened? So, buyer number one, who I liked a lot, you know, the guy from Colorado, he fell through. Buyer number two. Um, oh, yeah, we had locked up a different guy that I liked a lot. Um, and as I was double checking on him, like he was going silent. I was like, okay, what's the deal? Are you going to put in your earnest money today? And he's like, well, HGTV just uh, signed us up to do a show and I can't do both. So I'm doing HGTV. And I'm like, okay, all right, that one's down. So then we got the 1.41 guy yeah. and signed him up and he's like, okay, I'll be back in town tomorrow. I can check him. I've been in Florida. So he comes back to me two days later. I think he's like, man, I just, I did the numbers a little closer. Oh no, dude. It was after. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where it got super because uh, there was a, a, a fatal mistake in this process yes. that was made. The um, fatal mistake. Along the line. Yeah. Why don't you yes. explain it? So, I remember you guys talking about double closes and assignments, and I, but the other ones we did were assignments, super easy, no big deal. My business partner had heard of a double close but didn't know what it was, didn't know how it worked. He's like, I, I don't think we should do a double close. And I'm thinking, but everybody else said if you make too much money, you should do a double close. And he said, well, yeah, but it's going to cost us more, and that's going to be like thousands of dollars we have to pay. I don't think we should do it. Let's do an assignment. Yep. I'm like, okay, he he knows real estate. I don't know real estate. I guess I'll do an assignment. So I sent buyer number three the contract, the original contract, the assignment contract. Yep. He saw the spread, and he actually wrote back to me, holy bleep. He's like, you're making 200000 bucks. And then he wrote a day later and he's like, yeah, I did the math. Doesn't really make sense to that number. Blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, <laughs> here, here's the lesson for everybody out there listening. If you feel like there, this is a really big deal or it's a buyer you've never worked with or it's somebody that's really experienced in the business that's buying the property and they don't really know you and they don't have that personal relationship where they don't want to try to take money out of your pocket – um, you're going to run into some issues if you do not close on these deals and then sell it the sell it at the same time. So what, it, what it's called is a, a double close where essentially you close on it as the buyer, but in the same day you're closing the sell the, the new buyers buying it from you. So you don't own it for a long time, but you do take actual ownership. And if you're in, if you have a title company that will do a double escrow, essentially what they'll do is they'll use the funds from your cash buyer to fund the purchase of your contract. So what happens is the, the, the end buyer, the end cash buyer doesn't know exactly how much money you're making. They just know that they're buying a property for 1.4 as opposed mm -hmm. to I'm buying a property for 1.2 and paying Natasha uh, $200,000, <laughs> which he backed out. He got, he was like shaky. He was like, no, yeah. I don't want to do it uh, because he was like, wait a second. See what happens here. It's not necessarily that it was a bad deal at 1.4. It's not even necessarily that he didn't want Natasha to make money. What goes through the mind is, wait a second, what am I not seeing here? Okay, mm. why why did they sell it for so low? Is there something in there that's that 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 is strange or something that's going to screw up this deal and not make sense? So they want to go anytime that happens in an investor's mind, the price goes down. 
because the ri they feel like the risk is going up, so they need to uh, yeah. do something to kind of insulate themselves from that risk. So they, they, they're going to hit you up to reduce it. It's not because they're mean. It's not because they're bad people. It's not because they hate, hate what you're making or they're greedy. There's just something going in their head that they're uncertain that they're getting a good deal. And when that happens, you either lose them or they try to beat you up on price. Yep. Yep. So then what I, happened? Well, I think around this time. So originally the agreement between me and my partner was I would find the deals and he would bring the buyers, right? That's how we were going to do it. So around this time, I'm like, okay, time to find another buyer. Let's go back to the Colorado guy and actually talk to them, him this time. And so I asked my business partner about it. And he's like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to him. But then he went on vacation for like a week or two. Yeah. And didn't do anything. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, the timeline is like, you know, we got like not much time left. So I had to get an extension. And that's when the sellers started getting like, hmm not digging that but I was able to sweet talk her we did it I held her hand we're all okay for a little while longer and then my business partner came back and he finally got a hold of his friend and the guy was super interested he's like yeah we absolutely want this this is a great deal um what we didn't know is that he wasn't a cash buyer mm. he wanted to buy with through a credit union and then COVID happened yep yeah that yep. was just great so it was getting dragged out even longer again. And then, <laughs> then when the extension only had, I think it was like three days left, kid you not, they finally told us that their banker uh, turned down their request for a loan and they weren't going to be able to do it. Yep. And this was after we already had the explosive conversation I told you about where I sat on the phone and was yelled at for 20 minutes straight. Yeah. And that's a lot of yelling. Yeah. I mean, she went from like on your side, you're helping me out, this is going well, and you're like the sweetest woman in the world. I mean, you're like the <laughs> nicest, right? You're, you're volunteering overseas, you're die, almost dying to, to educate children. And you're not used to somebody screaming and being no. mad at you and being disappointed. You just gotta sit there no. and like absorb this and it's yeah. totally, anti your you it's it's totally the opposite of, of anything that you would put yourself in a situation and here you are on your third deal you've made fifty five hundred dollars so far on your third deal you've got this 21 unit thing you, you've got two hundred thousand there you're ready to do it and yeah. you're getting extensions and you're getting disappointments yeah. by partners and you're getting buyers yeah. backing out and, and um and so how'd you get through it well, during the screaming session, I, I remember it went through my mind. I wonder if she's going to try to sue me or something. I should probably record this. In Kentucky, we're allowed to record calls. Yeah. So I did record it um, just for my own safety. And I shared it with my business partner. And he's like, man, I could only listen to five minutes of that. That was awful. He's like, you handled it really well, but I'll see if I can take some of the, the weight of it after this. Um, but at the same time, I knew just in my gut that the weight of finding another buyer was going to be on me. Yeah. And I had three days left. So I called in a really good friend of ours. Um, my husband went to the military with him. We've been friends for like 20 years. And um, I was like, Daniel, I've got three days to sell these properties. Um, you want to help me? And he's like, oh, okay. So we gave him the lowdown and he's like, yeah, let's do this. And we went back through the other people who had been interested before and just started recalling them. And um, he brought one, I think, two back in. And one of them was the guy, the HGTV guy. And he's like, yes, I definitely want this. I've got the money. It's totally ready to go. My wife is okay now that COVID is kind of, you know, leveling out here. Let's do it. So we thought for sure he was going to do it. And he was going to do it at 1.3, which I was happy, you know. Yeah, I was eating humble pie, but I was willing to do that. Sure. Um, so when we're waiting for his earnest money, he's like, I need two weeks to think about this. And we had already gone back to the seller again to see if we could get a little more time. And she was not having it. No, nope. no way. No, how? Because nope. um, people were already circling back around to her, making offers like when it falls through, come to me, I'm going to buy it. And I was like, that is not happening. I'm going to do everything I can to close this deal. Mm -hmm. So 
Daniel was like, okay, now if we have to go back to the original guy who saw your assignment fee and gave you a much lower offer after that, are you willing to let it close with him? And I really, really, really had to think about that long and hard because um, it was majorly eating humble pie. It was like a literal kick in the gut. Mm -hmm. I remember telling him, I can't talk about this right now. I want to think about it on the drive home. I'm going to go take a run after this and then we'll talk. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it took me like 24 hours to become okay with it. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's do it. So he called awesome. back, talked to him like math guy to math guy, and they got it done for 1.267. 1.267. So what did you net? Like $21,000, 22, something like that. So, but you split 50-50 with your partner, so it was like a $42,000 deal? Well, what we did since Daniel was really the one who helped us on the crunch time, we gave him 20%. Yep. And then what was left, we split 50-50. Awesome. Hold on a second. So what was the total net, though? 67000 67000 yeah. on your third deal. Hold on a second. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Victory Bell engaged. <laughs> Thank you. So incredible. So incredible. Yeah. So how's business now? You're rocking and rolling. Yeah, it's great. My board is overflowing. My brain is exploding. I'm calling in Daniel again to be the integrator to help stop my swirling thoughts and like bring some focus. Awesome. Yeah. So incredible. Yeah, it's going to be the year's going to finish out fantastic. You've got a lot in your pipeline. It's yeah, now caught up to all those efforts because there was yep. a time. I mean, it was there, it was it was grind, 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 grind for the first few months. Yeah. Right. And you popped really a couple was. smaller deals and truly they probably were bigger deals. But, you know, business partners and whatnot uh, yeah. only giving you 500. But um Incredible. I mean, what, what advice would you give to somebody that's that's listening to this for the first time and they're like, wow, I've always had a passion for real estate. I've always had a passion to be my own boss. I've always had a passion to not have to like have the schedule of the everyday man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. like somebody that that is special that's listening to this or watching this, what advice would you give them to help them on the path to getting their first deal? Yeah. Um, I know you guys say it all the time and maybe the listeners get tired of hearing it, but it's absolutely true. The number one most important thing is your mindset. Jamil's come on before and said it and said, number one in your day has to be getting your mindset right before you do number two, which is lead flow, mm -hmm. lead generation. Yeah. Um, so I actually wrote that on my calendar. Number one at 5.30 in the morning is mindset. Mm -hmm. Then at like 6.30, I do what Pace does and start planning out the day. Mm -hmm. Then after that, start making calls. Awesome. Yep. But you have just, to do it every single day. You have to do it every day. Yeah. Every day. And the, the, the beautiful thing is, is as you're starting to build it up and as you're starting to get these deals to close, all of a sudden you have the fortunate opportunity to hire other people, to bring yeah. blessings unto them. Here's the thing. The beautiful thing about this business uh, is one, we're only working with people that are in distress. They're only going to sell a property if they're truly motivated because they just cannot handle this property anymore. They don't want to handle it anymore. They will trade equity for speed and convenience. And because we're out there helping, it is very, very, very special when you get to that point, that threshold where you push through and you've got consistent leads to bring other people that you know yeah. or love or whatever, bring them into this and say, we are going to change the community. Yeah. We are going to change the community. Yeah. We're it's going an out there and we are not only are we getting these deals and we're getting them into the hands of people that can make them beautiful and make them pride, have pride with them again. Yeah. But also we're making sure that we're taking off this huge stress of the seller and, and, yes. and giving people 
to, to, to buy into that vision or accept that vision is so rewarding and so yes. unbelievable. It's just the best business ever. And it's what you're, you're on the path to do. Daniel's sitting there next yes. to you. You guys are rocking and rolling. You've got your sub two uh, posters up. You've yes. got leads on the board going crazy. Yes. I mean, you're going to grow and you're going to really, you're going to, you're, you're going to bring this opportunity to the people that you know, like, and trust, or maybe their family. And it's such a blessing. It really yes. is. I'm really looking forward to the point when the business is to the place that it actually can start providing jobs in the community. Like that's what's most exciting to me about being an entrepreneur. Not only are you providing jobs in the community, but we are turning these ugly turds into something that is super beneficial again. And it's really fun getting to, to listen to the buyers talk about their pride in how much better it looks. And that $500 check I made is now being sold for 127 seven thousand dollars and it's absolutely gorgeous gorgeous it, yeah you change the neighborhoods literally, literally yeah. we are changing the neighborhoods we are the people the only reason wholesaling exists is because nobody wants to deal with the emotions of the seller nobody wants to deal yep. with distressed ugly properties and yep. here we come in and we are just going after them and we love them and we support yep. them and we communicate effectively yep. with them and then we build a company that does that and we're off to the races. And now you're, you're, you're making 30, 40, 50, a hundred thousand dollars a month doing yep. that. And the only way you do that is if you're providing 20, 30, 40, a hundred thousand dollars a month in value to your community. Exactly. And that's the biggest reward ever. The biggest yep. reward is understanding that the income that you're getting from these assignments, from these double escrows or double closes or flips that you do is coming from the value that you're putting into that community, which is just, yep. it's incredible. And you love it. I mean, I this do. is somebody that has traveled the world taking care of people. And now you got to do it in your backyard and, yep. and, and with the people that you love. So it's yep. just incredible. So I love watching your growth. I love communicating with you. You've always been a shining light in our TTP group and, and with me personally. So I want to say thank you for that. And thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for being such an awesome coach. I still <laughs> hear your voice in my head and it helps me all the time. Well, listen, you do all the hard work. I'm just, uh, I, I'm the guide. I've got the path and uh, I, it is an incredible blessing to be able to do work with, with people like you. So um, it's awesome. So just, uh, just to uh, tie a bow on this podcast, a couple of things um, that Natasha mentioned. She, she mentioned driving for dollars. I highly suggest the Deal Machine app. Use the TTP discount code. That'll get it. Uh, it's the biggest discount they have. Um, that'll get it from $50 a month to 40, which is great. Um, you had talked about skip tracing, getting the numbers batch. Skiptracing.com is a great resource. It's the best resource to be able to get those phone numbers that are really accurate for the properties that you're trying to get a hold of. And last but not least, if you are interested in joining the most proactive group in real estate investing like Natasha, it is the TTP family. It is the TTP program. Go to wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. That's wholesalinginc.com forward slash TTP. Check it out. If it feels good in your gut, sign up for a call. It'll either be with me or my right-hand guy. And uh, I'd look forward to working with you personally. So uh, Natasha, thank you from Wilmore, Kentucky, representing Woo -woo. the wonderful wonderful city city town of Wilmore yeah. um, and, uh, and she's do, village she, yeah exactly <laughs> she's doing some incredible things so we're exciting to watch we're, we're excited to watch her as she progresses but everybody out there um, this is the end and as always I encourage you to talk to people till next time love you guys <laughs> see ya